Ben Shapiro out there doing the yeoman's work of like, you can trust me to early vote because I'm a uh, white uh, conservative. But um, other people, mm, sounds suspicious. Mm. Shaved his beard. Okay, meanwhile, John Fetterman, as expected, is, is falling apart in polling. Wick Insights has now a new post-debate poll from Pennsylvania. The polling has been limited in the aftermath of the debate. All the polling shows that Fetterman has lost ground. This poll shows Oz at 47.6 and Fetterman at 45.9. Now, there's been some early voting in Pennsylvania. This is one of the reasons why early voting is super duper bad. And like, I voted early because it is available to me. I wish they would change the rules and it would not have been available to me and that you'd have to vote within like three days of the election unless you have some sort of excuse. The fact that people are voting months out from an election en masse is really bad because then there is late breaking Pause information that I change. No First one's all, voting months out no from an election. Is, not only not en masse, not on one. Not one person votes months out. I don't even think the earliest ballot is available even a month out. Although it, it probably should be. Yeah, why can't it be? Like, I, th I, I've i never changed my mind. Like, I, I know who I'm going to vote for. It's the one with, la unless, like, it comes out there, there's a switch in the candidate who is supportive of, like, the pro act and labor. Like, it's not a question that, like, I'm not watching debates or, like, for the latest newspaper article to figure out if I'm going to vote for, like, the Democrat or Republican. I think it's easy. And here's yeah. the thing that undercuts his point. He's voting early because it's available to him. He wishes it wasn't. But you're not obligated to vote early. Yeah, why and not? If you are really convinced yeah. that we need to see every single moment of campaigning up until the day of the election, why don't you just choose to do that? Why do you think you have all the information if you don't think that other people have all the information when they early vote? No one is obligated to early vote. Well, it would be more convenient for him to early vote, Sam. Oh, oh well, fair right? enough. Right? Like, he, he might have to work on election day. That, that's, that's true. That's, but only that's... he is the only person, apparently, that might have to work on election day or might be out of town on election day or has already made their decision. And so it's okay when he does it. Don't you get it? I mean, that's conservatism 101, honestly. When you're the Pope of the Jews, like, um, uh, like, uh, like Ben Shapiro is, you get special privileges. Hey, you're the Pope. That's uh, democracy. You, that's you democracy. Get to choose. Wait, wait, no, never mind. You get to choose who is a Jew, and also you get to vote early. Those are the two big things. Mm. Um, the fact that people are voting months out from an election en masse is really bad, because then there is late breaking information that might change your vote. In fact, one of the Google searches that was most highly trending in the aftermath of that Oz Fetterman debate was, how do I change my vote in Pennsylvania? You figure there have been something like five to 700,000 early votes in Pennsylvania. There will be five million votes probably in that election. The vast majority of people who vote early probably were dedicated partisans. Not a lot of independents showing up to vote early. They tend to vote day of. What that means is that if the early votes in Pennsylvania are even remotely even, which they seem to be at this point by party ID, then, then Oz will win that race. No, the, the, what you just said at the end there proves the exact point that you were saying that you weren't, like, the, the, the left's point, uh, essentially. The partisans are going to vote early, for the most part, because they already know who they're going to vote for. And a debate for performance from John Fetterman or from Dr. Oz is not going to change that. The people who are undecided will more likely vote on Election Day, as he says. Um, yeah, but, like the whole thing, people Googling how to change their vote. Like, I don't really buy that. And I feel like that could very easily be gamed. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I don't think that's very scientific. Tim and, from Mini I'm sorry. Tim from no, Minneapolis no, says yeah, early ahead. vote uh, ballots are available 46 days ahead of most elections in Minnesota. He, so he just go. has such a, Ben Shapiro has such a childish, like, starry-eyed view of American democracy that's just not based in any reality. But, like, what's uh, frustrating to me about is, like, that's the view of, like, everybody who, like, Barry Weiss who's acting like, oh, yeah, this changes something because uh, this debate happened. It's like, no, I, why are, why do we have to act like the optics of one debate, like, people are judging based off that. That's very infantile. I can't imagine there's more than a fraction of people who are that superficial, but also that... Uh, uh, you know, dependable at getting to the polling place. And frankly, I'm happy if their votes are locked in, but uh, if they're that superficial and they already early voted. Sorry. Well, I mean, uh, 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 Matt brought up the point. What about like the second abortion? What if there's a third uh, woman that Herschel Walker has pressured into having an abortion uh, or fourth for that matter? 
Mm. I mean, there's a week left. We, we could hear from maybe some of his other children who are upset at him. Who knows? All right, let's do, let's just do uh, Crowder, who also, they're really piling on uh, Fetterman. It's going to be interesting to see. I mean, I guess we'll have maybe some sense. Maybe there'll be some exit polling. I'm not quite sure. Um, if, if the debate had any impact on, on uh, Fetterman's electability, I, I would imagine it's possible that it could have. Uh, but again, you know, so few people watch the debate. Part of the reason why they're they they push it like this is to spin it after the fact. And um, my, you know, and I will say this, that the AP covered it for two days in a row afterwards. But they when they covered uh, Fetterman the second day, they had that clip of him in a rally in pittsburgh and he sounded good mm. and so um it is it's hard to know but uh here's a steven crowder who is um who is mad now that uh words have meaning and people address certain uh, things before I get there, we're going to talk about Fetterman and uh, versus Dr. Oz. And now, of course, everyone's talking about ableism. That's the only reason you might not like, uh, you know, a guy who looks like uh, American History X warmed over, uh, who can't pronounce his own name. It's because you're ableist. And my question to you is, did you buy it? Is anyone buying this? Is anyone buying the ableism stuff? Nope. Ableism is a new racism. It's another way of shutting down dialogue before you can actually discuss ideas. Pause it. <laughs> is that what racism was? Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> it's just an idea. It's the way it doesn't racism doesn't exist. It's a rhetorical trick. Mm -hmm. It's a sleight of hand. Yeah. Meant to oh, chill you're free gonna debate. Us, you're not going to let us have a conversation about how uh, black people are uh, born with a lower IQ and uh, don't have the same uh, intellectual capacity as white people. Uh, you're just shutting down debate. That's all. You're yeah. just shutting down debate. Shifty eyed uh, Jews, uh, you're shutting down debate. Come on now. Velveteen rabbit eyes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Ableism is a new racism. It's another way of shutting down dialogue before you can actually discuss ideas. And it's based on an identity. It's shut down dialogue based on identity so we don't get to ideas. So we'll be talking about that. Also, Taylor Swift uh, can't do anything right. Okay. Oh, yeah. wow. That's the, true. The news. That's true. Shutting down ideas based upon identity. Just because you identify uh, as, uh, as a black person, therefore, I can't talk about how um, that y you should be arrested. <laughs> Whatever happened to the marketplace of ideas? I, well, I love to be a 55-year-old like man who's like a Blaze listener who's watching Steven Crowder talk about Taylor Swift. I mean... This rocks. <laughs> this uh, is epic. That is, that is so right in the wheelhouse. <laughs> that is so right in the wheelhouse. She's blonde. And I got news for you. He's divorced. Yes. And I say this as a 55-year-old divorced man. Mm. Uh, that guy is divorced and he's mad. He's very mad. <laughs> We can't even enjoy Taylor Swift anymore. And now she's, what, sleeping with trans people? Oh, my goodness. She ruined my life. This... <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, you, I, I, uh, isn't that a story? Okay. Like that? No, no. I, maybe Taylor I, Swift didn't ruin my life specifically, <laughs> but I transfer all of my anger onto Taylor Swift. Um, no, she's the opposite. She's like the, the, she the white woman side? who doesn't do anything wrong or say anything political. She, really. she, released, I didn't really, I, she released a music video recently where she's like um, watching herself like on a scale and people thought of it as kind of like fat phobic in the context of the video. So Crowder says later that she triggered the fat gay community. Community, well, it, he's talking uh, about. also, uh, Taylor Swift's love interest in the Midnight's video teaser is trans. So uh, <gasps> this, is, this has set people pretty, yeah. pretty apocalyptic. Wow. Uh, well, on the one kids. hand, she uh, was she's fat phobic, apparently. Yay. But on the other hand, trans person in music yeah. video. Ooh, bad. Nobody's perfect. One, Nobody's, perfect. Yep. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's yeah. perfect. Nobody's perfect.